So, today we are going to discuss about uh, facades and a fundamental of facade. So, I am Selvam, I am a part of a Glass Academy board. So, this subject is purely to understand the basics of facade and just to highlight to you how the facade element plays an important role in our building. First, what is facade? A facade is generally an exterior side of a building, usually, but not always the front. And word front, it's called the frontage or face of a building, like our face. So, building got different forms of faces. First, in architecture, the facade of a building is often most important aspect from a design standpoint, as it sets the tone for rest of the building. As it says, yes, a building with a, a good facade uh, will have a lot of uh, yield in form of uh, savings, in form of energy and lot of compliance and other things. From engineering perspective, of course, facade plays a, a bigger role. It shelters the building against a lot of energy impact, which, you know, is the nature. Many facades are historical and local zoning regulations and it is governed by most of the time uh, local bodies. When I say local body, the government and the terrain and a lot of those parameters will govern the facade. In mid-century, you know, like 20th century, a structural concept has been there, which is called a shear wall, the external walls of the building no longer had support high dead loads and it could be designed much lighter open than before. In olden days, of course, you can see the whole facade wall like uh, palaces, like fort. There they use the wall as a structural element. But nowadays, we are finding ways to minimize that amount of load and making it much lighter. So that invention has given uh, rise to finding use of glass as a material and so on and so forth. A lot of materials involved in forming this new braid facade systems. Cotton wall term is used to describe a building facade which does not carry any dead load from the building other than its own weight. So it just a, a, a non-load bearing wall which is attached as a skin but it should take care of lot of other factors which governs the building function. Now let us start looking at transformation of facade, how it transformed. Let us go back to what we believe we are. Right? So this is the transformation taken place with us. So I always like to compare ourselves to a building because I believe the building is, an, uh, is in a life form. It lives like us, it, it breathes, it contracts, it expands and moves. So when you believe it <coughs> almost is same like us. So when you look at old ages, yes, this is a first known man-made stone house, maybe something else would have been there. Then yes, the marbles, what you know, people believe they have built. A nice facade you can see here, pyramid and the other things, of course, we shelter a lot of uh, uh, good things inside the tomb, but there is a good stone facade. Same here, if you see during those days, they used leather as a facade for sheltering themselves against adverse climate. Eskimos, of course, you know, they used ice itself as a igloo and then they started living there. Then came slowly where this is where you know they started building a structure where the facade became more of a load bearing system. Then yes, they added light, went everything to the facade to bring in more of natural element into the building that then got transformed to much more colonial type of structures where the facade have taken a lot of transformation and today that is what we are. You can see a building, slender, tall, light, but taking care of all the other factors which affect the building function. 
So, today this is what we have. Now, look at various habitats like us, what they do, where they live and what is a facade. Look at ant nest. It, it carries lot of uh, functions. The ant nest, of course, they live inside, but it protects them against the weather. Look at bird's nest. This cuckoo bird nest is one amazing uh, thing which keeps the bird away from all natural disasters, you know, like rain, water, wind, everything, they hang there and it has been built by them. But still we can't find a way how they make those things, you know, to stand against all these weather conditions, beehive, spider web. Then of course, from there the human beings started learning how we can build a shelter for ourselves. Then came a form of hut, they used straws, grass, wood, whatever they can find to form the hut. And then yes, they went to find a way to build a stronger structure as using stone and other material. So, the life have transformed as well as the facade element or skin of the building or skin of uh, dwelling have transformed in various ways. Now, nature has given so much to habitat where our living habitats have started to build their own shelters to comfort them from. Okay, this is a nice picture, you can see a cat inside a boat. Of course, she feels comfortable inside, she feels warm maybe. However, they take, have to take care of environmental impacts. What are environmental impacts? Not limited to the wind, then you have rain, then you have you know, uh, 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 seismic things happening, then lot of factors. The environmental impacts are something which you can't really predict what will happen, you know, uh, when, when a wind blows, we will not be able to really justify ourselves. Okay, this is how the wind pattern is going to be, or the wind is going to be stronger or lighter. Then climate conditions, of course, the facade will take care of all the climate conditions, but it has to be well designed in a way that it is taking care of the local terrain. We cannot say example, do a facade considering uh, different climate conditions and then say, okay, I have done this because it was done elsewhere. So, we have to be very careful when approaching this facade. So, climate conditions play a very a big role in while you design the facades. Comfort and privacy, what are those? Of course, if I put a glass, I do not want, not in my bedroom wall where I want to see the outside world or people to pick in. So, we need to see the privacy factors as well, how to design it, what sort of glass I can use or I can put something else to blanket off. Comfort, of course, we do not want to stay in a building or in a house or in an office where you know you start to hear so many things happening around you like noises around the building or traffic or anything of that kind. So, you need to have a design which takes care of comfort as well as privacy for the dwellers and most importantly safety and structural stability. Whatever we design, it has to be designed for the building life cycle say 30 years or 50 years. So, the material what you choose and the system what you build have to be focused first start with safety, structural stability at the same time look at the life expectancy of the uh, thing. So, your choice of facade, these are the small things you can group together to bring up a system. Next, understanding about facade. So, as I said in the beginning, I always look at the building like equal them to, uh, to us ourselves. Now, let us look at a human skeleton. Say a skeleton does not have a life no form, it is a skeleton. So, human skeleton without a skin, imagine. The same you imagine a building without a skin. So, they do not function, you, you, you cannot stay in it, you, it does not work. Right? So, without skin, both of these elements does, does not exist, I, they do not help you. So, you need a skin, not only a skin, but still lot of things which goes inside. So, if I compare a human so, what are the parts which goes inside? So, if I go a little bit more to understand a human skeleton, now if you see 
you got nerves, flesh and bone, everything, the life organs there. I look at them like the main systems of the building, bone and other things considered to be the structure. Along with that all the nerving system which you call your electrical, your plumbing, your fire, all the other things which parts which forms part of the building are considered as the main nerve system. So now apply a skin. So without the skin again the body does not function. So a skin protects all the important system of our body whether it is your heart, lung, your nerve system, everything. So now I hope you all can understand how important a facade is. So the sad part also is people do not give attention to detail. They always feel like okay I have done a structure, facade I do not I don't bother, put something else as long as building it get close. But if you understand the importance of having, uh, 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 seeing ourselves how we function, how our body is made, then you will understand the importance of facade in a building. Importance and transformation of facade in a building was well briefed in a simple form, that is what I did. So to make ourselves to understand easy at the same time how important is facade, I have taken us ourselves to compare. Facade as important as human body is designed to withstand all variants created by nature and the environment of building or living space. Of course, a facade is not just a simple element which stays dead there, it has to react to the weather condition, it has to uh, communicate to the outside world, it has to you know, live within the environment. So that is how facade plays an important role. We have learned so much from the nature and start to explore various possibilities of defining a proper shelter for us to live in. Of course the trends are changing today, we are going back to find what are the best possible ways we can improve our livelihood. Look at ourselves, today we cage ourselves inside buildings with the air condition, with light, with so on and so forth. But go back in old ages, what they, they did not have electricity, they did not have anything else. But they lived happily, they lived healthy. So what they did, they went to design things which bring them more environment i.e. like light, like wind, like bit of uh, heat. So they made the comfort, they used that comfort but today we are trying to create a comfort by means of inventions. So the balancing of environment against the invention is very critical and is very important when you start designing a facade. Now let us see some of the materials which has been used in facade systems. As I said the skin can be of any form. During evaluation, if you start to see, they use husk. That was a prime thing they have done in the olden days. They go to forest, they pick up the leaves, trunk, they started building up. And then they started using leather because when the animal gets killed for their food or anything, they use the skin as a shelter. It is a good shelter, of course. It gives them a little bit of warmth. And then they started using stone. When human being started to understand how to put stone together then they started building facade wall with stone then become a bearing structure. Then came slowly you know steel then we have timber, now new era we started using aluminium, brass, ceramic now, like, like the ceramic vessel is a ceramic tiles, they are copper, paper, paper also now being used as a facade component. Glass of course is one of the prime uh, substitute because it plays a major uh, role in communication. When I say communication, you know, people can communicate to the outside world through glass because glass, you know, it is transparent and you start to see the outside world. So the, the invention also helped in a way to keep you know, the, the dwellers or the people with the comfort of communicating to the outside world. Yes, stainless steel, gold, example, zinc. So there is no limitation that is what I am trying to explain with material. Material is a choice. If you know how to engineer it, if you know how to form it to put it into the uh, facade system that is how they have proven. So they have gone beyond the types of material got changed 
and the invention is still going on. So, your choice of material plays a major role as well in while you are designing a facade or understanding a facade. So, these are the things which you know governs the material as well. Now, today if I am going to choose a material, what it has to be? It has to be stronger. In sense, you know, it has to have a strength which can withstand the environmental impact. Second, it has to be malleable. You know, you, you should be able to work around that material. It should not be hard enough where you know you start to work, then it breaks or it gets distorted or whatever. It should be easily malleable, easy to machine it using machine, stronger and less weight. Okay, the more weight you create and then you spend more money and more uh, into your building or structure, whatever you are building up. So, it has to be less in weight, but stronger, good conductor. It should be a, a good conductor of any environmental impacts and you should expand as well because the building they breathe, they move. So, your system or the facade what you design have to have all this uh, compatibility and corrosion resistance that is very important because your environment carries lot of pollution. So, whatever material you choose it has to be corrosion resistant because your air is polluted, your, uh, your complete environment is polluted today. So, the material what you choose have to withstand those and it should be non-magnetic. If it is magnetic of course, you know what will happen to your building and non-toxic and recyclable that is more important. You know, even if any accidents do happen or fire, it should not be toxic. See now what is happening, this became a prime discussion today all around the world. As I speak today, yes, it is a, a debate going around the world. Recently, yes, there are a lot of accidents happen and now the world woken up. Oh God, okay, I have chosen a material, but it became toxic. A lot of people die. So, the cladding material choice is not just simply uh, to fun and first, but it is more towards safety as well. So, non-toxic, but unfortunately today people do not understand those factors, but they start picking up material which will hurt them. So, facade element in a simple form, the material choice if you ask me and what I would recommend or I would strongly suggest use material which are non-combustible. The word non-combustible should give you a lot of things. It means you should not burn. Even you touch it, even you know any electrical uh, damages happen. The material what you choose should not create any form of additional impact. It can break or do something, but it should not burn. So, non-combustible material is a choice. That is the only way you can have a beautiful facade which helps, which governs you and keeps the building going up and recyclable. Once you start to see all you know, the material getting deteriorated, you should be able to recycle and bring it back because there is no more place left in the universe to go and stockpile all our rubbish. So, we should find a way to material or a choice of material should be recyclable. All the material today whatever they use, most of them are recyclable. For example, glass you can recycle it 100 percent, aluminum 100 percent. So, all the material most of them which you will see in, in the further discussion when we are going on the presentation. So, hope until here we have uh, seen what a material has, how the material have transformed and what are the factors which govern them and your choice of material. So, when you are designing a facade the importance you would have seen it material choice you have seen, availability of material, the invention, everything you have run through the program, you have seen it, but the choice is us choosing the right thing. So, until here we touch base clearly what is facade and how important it is for a building and what are the materials which were used in today's world or in the past to create a building shelter. So, now look at now, let us start looking at the important aspect. Okay, we have seen the material, we understood what is the facade. Now, how I am going to design a system? The system in your design, not limited to what is written here, of course, it should be structurally safe, it should perform well structurally, it has to 
be seismic proof as much as possible and thermal expansion. Of course, when you talk about thermal expansion, it is a good subject. Whatever material you choose, it has to withstand all climate conditions. Say example, there is so much of heat. It should, when heat is there, metal trying to expand like us, when you breathe, yes, I expand. And then I contract, when I get colder, the material is same. When I inhale, then I get, you know, going in. So, inhale and exhale, same with metal, they breathe. When there is heat, they expand. So, the system what you choose, the material you what you choose should be able to expand and contract without affecting the performance of the building. Corrosion as I spoke, the material should not corrode, then it will become a risk for uh, the building, it will collapse. Movement, what are movements available? Of course, the building move. When there is a seismic, a building starts to move. When there is a seismic force acting on in the ground or normal with wind, the building move. If you look at tall structures, if you start restraining yourself against the wind, then your structure will become very, very strong, which you cannot design. So, today the design has gone forward to design buildings, they are flexible, which can move against your wind or any form of movement which happens around like seismic movement. Structure creep, of course, today when you talk about concrete, it is it, it creep happens with the concrete. Throughout the life cycle, they start to shrink, you know, in the beginning of at least, you know, when after the structure casting everything is over, they try to shrink little bit. So, the design how to take care of it. Then internal comfort, as I said, what are the comfort factors? You can keep on telling, okay, I would like to have a wall which should talk to me, oh, okay, what a wall can, how the wall can talk, yeah. Today there is technology available, a glass wall which faces the exterior can be a media wall, it can talk to you, I mean it can, there can be a TV, but attached to it. So, comfort you know there are a lot of factors, I do not want to hear outside noise, so I want a silent glass, I do not want the heat to come in, yes I want to have a UV glass. So, the comfort is not getting limited, day by day the requisite for comfort is building up. So, we need to find material, we have to design for all this and it should be lightweight as I said in the beginning. If it is not lightweight, then you start adding more weight to the system. So, your building will not perform, they will get heavier and heavier, they do not move. And of course, it has to be commercially viable and also it should resist the other impacts of nature. So, when you design, you know, there are unknown factors, you do not know, suddenly one fine day you will see the whole environmental condition changed around your, uh, around your uh, place of delling or due to the terrain condition, your whole wind pattern got changed. So, you have to think all those when you, you know, start designing any building facade. So, there are a lot of process involved. Well, designing a facade. It is not just simply, okay, I put a building, okay, you just put some glass and metal panel, I am done with that. No. A design of a facade carries a lot of requirements. So, I will play a small video now to show you or prove what I said like it building breathe or building move. Okay, now you can watch closely how that black building is moving. This is a live video shot in Japan. In, you know, in Japan always there is seismic movement every half an hour. This is a 50 plus floor building. If you watch the building very closely, see how it moves. So, the system what you design or the building uh, what you design should withstand all this movement. So, facade, you look at this, nothing happening to the facade. Glass is fine, all the things are designed fine. So, these seismic movements can can happen anywhere, any part of the world. So, the design of us have to take care of all these factors when you are designing it. So, a material transformation have taken place, but material and the design have to consider all this, not only this, wind, rain. So, when there is wind, there is water, when there is water, <laughs> You know, lot of factors will govern it, you know, you should create a shelter for all this. So, your design of facade plays a very important role. Yes, you can have a beautiful building, 
if you don't know how to design your facade right then yes your building will start to deteriorate immediately examples now you know, like you can I put up a collection of world's tallest building you can see they are tall they are big yeah there are 100 floors here now I believe in the world they are planning to create a one kilometer tall building so the challenge is there because the urban development has gone so big the population has grown so people are trying to see how I can create vertical buildings because there is no more land mass available for us to create so people want to go vertical so when you go taller then your building have to have a lot of uh, you know, controls and you know, a lot of uh, uh, points you have to think while designing a facade so it is not just simply you can choose anything and put in this kind of building so you have to run a lot of tests you have to understand you know which material will perform well in this building facades are commonly called as curtain wall skin of a modern building or structurally glazed wall this is a common word today they use around the world how you call a wall as is called the function as a structural system to hold the facade together with various infills as required by architect or owner yes when i design a facade there is there is a commercial uh, uh, viability also have to be taken into account not only that like us yes see i am dressed today with the, with the blazer with the shirt it, it adds more presentable uh, future like the same to the building so you want the building to be presentable to the outside world you want the building to be uh, 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 in a better form where you know people will start looking at the building and start you know moving inside so the facade plays a very important role you know you you you, you can use the facade to invite people you can use the facade to you know invite environment around you so today there are a lot of things can be done with facade so choice of facade element depend on various factor as listed in the previous slide so your choice yes the, the requirement is there by client and architect but the choice is limited to the elements for you choose you can't have an unviable selection where you want to put it on the facade and the structure cannot support so your choice and the elements what you choose have to have and simple compatibility then only you will be able to create a better facade so now we are going to talk about different forms of facade hope until here we are clear where we started we understood how the environment impacts the facade what are the different kinds of movements happening to the building which the designer have to take care of the facade have to take care of those now we are going to talk about different form of facade systems mainly used in the field in order so it started with fenestration with windows what is fenestration yes of course you make a opening on the wall you fenestrate then you put a window that's how they started if you had a brick wall or a solid wall or stone wall they made a opening and then they put a window there before glass was invented of course they had wooden windows they had you know, in a jali or you know, some sort of uh, barriers but they wanted only air and light to come in so then yeah, they started to understand you know, how we can change the thing so like instead of brickwork and stone as they went to do precast wall you know, precast it is just like you know you do it, you do a wall in your factory and you attach to the building so you precast the system right? so then came the invention of the stick system cotton wall they talk about a six system cotton wall cotton wall the term we discussed what is stick yeah you stick something onto the wall so you create a grid and then you stick something so as the name is specified stick cotton wall so you have a wall with a, a stick on system then the invention went up so we started slowly you know building up with the invention then they called the same unit as cotton wall later we will you know uh, uh, go in depth to understand what is a six system and semi unitized now the trend when i say now not today maybe for last uh, 40 50 years or more they have developed a system which takes care of all those what we saw the movement the creep 
uh, so called uh, expansion, contraction. So, the advanced system what is available today, where people wisely use for doing all this taller or shorter, whatever building form, it is called pressure equalized unitized system. So, later when we go through this presentation, you will start to understand what are the pros and cons of each system and how they perform and why the transformation have happened for what is the reason. That is what we are going to see. Prior to that, I just added this slide to show how the facades influence a building. Look at the chart. 50 percent of energy consumed today, this was a old uh, slide, maybe today it is a little bit more, but all around the world, this is the factor. A 50 percent of energy is consumed in buildings. When I say building, your house, your office spaces, your commercial, retail, whatever you call. 25 percent is only to the industry and 25 percent to transport. So, look at it. We have lived in an environment without energy, but today we spend more money and more energy to buy energy and spend. So, that comfort is what now we have to turn back. Now, the world realized this. So, they are going for reusable energy. They are trying to find energy source where they will be able to compensate. How much fossil fuel we can burn? It is all over. The more you go and take, you, your earth is getting weaker. So, they started going with wind. They started going with now understanding how I can use the sunlight more efficiently. But think why we cannot go back to olden days. Say example, in this part of the world, a place like say Bangalore, throughout the year, the temperature there is very moderate. Maybe uh, three months or four months in a year, yes, it goes slightly closer to 26 to 30 degrees, but rest of the year it is colder. But why I still need an AC? Why I need to energize a building still? Why I can't use fresh air? Think about it. So, why I introduce this slide is to tell you how reverse we are you know going in our living. We are trying to kill ourselves by overdoing it. So, let us start going back to the past, learn from there, understand about the material, use material which can breathe, which can bring in more air and more light.